let's turn to a different abstract on the same population, and this was by Dr. Yang and colleagues, looking at uh, fatinib, or gilatriff, which was approved by the FDA uh, relatively recently last year for first-line treatment of patients with an activating EGFR mutation. And this trial, or this uh, analysis, looking at the pooled results from two large studies of this agent compared with chemo that found a survival benefit. Can you tell us more about that, Melissa? Sure, I'd be happy to. As you said, Jack, it's a, it was a pooled analysis of two trials. Uh, the Lux Lung 3 trial was a fatinib or gilatriff versus cisplatin and pemetrexid. The uh, Lux Lung 6 was the same a fatinib or gilatriff versus cisplatin and gemcitabine. The uh, Lux Lung 3 was a global trial, it was done with sites all over the world. Um, Lux Lung 6 was done primarily in Asia, and both studies had about 350 patients in them. So they combined the two trials, and then they took out just the patients with the common activating mutations, EGFR exon 19 deletions and LA58R exon 21 mutations. So that left about 631 patients, um, 400 of which got a fatinib, and about 200 that got chemotherapy. And then they looked over time to see if you if you add all of the numbers in the trials together, do you get an improvement in survival, overall survival? This analysis was looking at, and in fact, there was a, a significant difference in overall survival. The uh, patients who were treated with the fatinib lived a median of 27 months versus 24 months with chemotherapy. The other interesting analysis that was part of this trial was in, this sep in the uh, separate populations of EGFR uh, mutant mutation positive patients. Um, those with exon 19 deletions and then those with um, exon 21 mutations. And in those patients that were treated with a fatinib. And it was interesting that amongst the patients with exon 19 deletions, a fatinib seemed to improve their chances of survival where in the group of patients that had exon 21 mutations, the statistics suggested that maybe the benefit was not as great and maybe there was no benefit at all. So what was your takeaway from this? Is a fatinib in your mind the clear EGFR inhibitor of choice in this setting, or did it not make that case? That was what Dr. Y that was Dr. Yang's last um, conclusion um, uh, from his excellent presentation. Um, I thought that was a little bit more of a stretch than I was willing to take. Um, there is some data uh, that uh, in the past. Um, uh, my friend Greg Riley wrote a paper in CCR in uh, 2006 to suggest that the natural history of these patients is in fact different. And so it, that may also explain the difference in survival that we saw. I didn't know if the conclusion that afatinib was the king in that population was uh, the conclusion I would have made. But nevertheless, it, it is uh, gratifying to see that in the large pooled analysis, that in fact there was a, a little bit of a difference mm -hmm. um, in overall survival because that is the thing that the other trials have not been able to show, mm -hmm. likely because of crossover. Uh, those patients who got chemotherapy eventually got a fatinib and uh, vice versa. But the survival difference was seen, and Nasser, you said that it's really impressive to see a survival difference. Does that seal the deal for you? And now, I don't know if a fatinib was your preferred agent before. Is it? Did that change your mind about things? Uh, no. The um, it's important to underscore a couple of things. Uh, one is that the individual trials did not show any survival difference. So it was only when you pooled the two studies together, which has never been done with any of the other studies. There are several gefitinib trials versus chemotherapy trials. And I wonder if we simply pool that data together if we'll see the same thing. 
Um, I thought that the presentation was noteworthy for some of the reasons that Dr. Johnson had mentioned. One of the major take-home messages is that not all mutations are the same. Now, there have been previous publications that have suggested that exon 19 mutations are those that confer the most benefit, that it's prognostically the best, and those patients respond even more uh, robustly to EGFR TKIs. But they were not large data sets. They were small reports. Um, this is the largest uh, report of this. And I think that uh, is really a take-home message, that we need to be analyzing and thinking about these mutations a little bit differently. Afatinib, as you had mentioned in your uh, discussion, is uh, perceived to have a little bit more toxicity. So uh, this question is being addressed. What is the best EGFR TKI in the first-line setting for patients with mutations? It's being addressed, and the study is done. And it was done in Asia, and it's comparing it to the most commonly used EGFR TKI in Asia, which is gefitinib. And I suspect in a year or so, we'll see the, the data. And if it's king, then great. We've got a king. We'll crown it. There are other things that we don't quite understand about this crossover issue, and the sequence of therapy might be relevant. I'm struck by the finding that in the afatinib trials, the Exxon 21 patients did have a clear improvement in response rate and progression-free survival. The early indicators suggested that afatinib was clearly superior to chemotherapy, but survival trended clearly in the other direction. Now, it wasn't statistically significant, but if you saw two curves, you'd know you wanted to be on the other curve. Um, and that's puzzling to me. And at the same time, it leads me to wonder if there might be a difference. Maybe it's specific to the actual mutation, exon 21 or 19, mm -hmm. whether you good. should get one first and the other later. But right. there may be things we don't yet understand. And this is why, at the end of the day, overall survival is the major endpoint we should be looking at. And I'm sure we'll talk about this, but there was another trial at ASCO this year, a phase three trial with a targeted drug, in which there's no difference in response rate, there's no difference in progression-free survival, but there was a difference in overall survival. And in this instance, the opposite was true. So, you know, we can measure certain things, but is it meaningful? And you can measure survival, and it's meaningful. And you never need an independent review committee for that. You don't need interpretation.